Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's Grade 6 Practice Problems Review is on Unit 5, Lesson 5, Decimal Points in Products. And as you can see, we have a lot of the answers already here, and so finding the product of each number in one hundredth. Basically, you have the 1 and 221 thousandths, 0 0.118, 13.501, 0 0.10, sorry, 0 0.01704, um, now, what happens basically when you're multiplying by 1 one hundredth is you're moving the decimal point two places to the left. And so multiplying a decimal number by 1 one hundredth means dividing by 100, which moves the decimal point two places to the left, which is just like one of the activities we did today in class. Which expression has the same value as 6 hundredths times 154 thousandths? Select all that apply. And so I've taken us through here, and the first one does apply because you have 6 times 1 hundredth, which is 6 hundredths, and you have the 154 thousandths, which is the same thing as 154 times 1,000. Now, that's 6 hundredths, that's 154 over 1,000. Here in B, it's taking it that next step. It's saying, okay, I have 1 hundredth and 1,000th, if I multiply those two numbers together, I get 1 one hundred thousandth, and then the 6 times 154, so B works. C doesn't work because it's not 6 times a tenth, it's 6 times a hundredth, and it's not 154 times a hundredth, it's 154 times a thousandth. So C doesn't work. So then if we look at E, E does work. You've got this being 6 times 154 is 924, and our hundred thousand. And so this is essentially now... 924 hundred thousandths. And sure enough, if you look at our place value here, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, 924 hundred thousandths. And now if we calculate the value in question three of each expression by writing the decimal factors as fractions, then writing their product as a decimal. All right. One hundredth times two hundredths. So one hundredth times two hundredths. One times two is two. One hundred times one hundred is ten thousand. So this is two ten thousandths, tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands. Two ten thousandths. Three tenths times two tenths. Don't cross simplify any of these on these guys. This is six hundredths. You want it to be six hundredths, so that way you can go tenths, hundredths, six hundredths. Now, 1 and 2 tenths is the same thing as 12 tenths, if you think about it that way. It's 12 tenths times 5 over 1 is 60 tenths. Well, this is 60 tenths, which is the same thing as 6. 9 tenths times, this is 1.1, 1, .1, 1 and 1 tenth, which is really the same thing as 11 tenths. 9 times 11 is 99. 10 times 10 is 100, so you have 99 hundredths. 1 and 5 tenths is the same thing as 15 tenths times 2, 30 tenths, which is the same thing as, well, that's 30 tenths right there, but we normally just call it 3. Now, question 4, I went a little overboard here, but write three numerical expressions that are equivalent to 4, this is tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths, times 5, 1, which is tenths, hundredths, thousands. So, essentially, 4 times 10,000, or more than 10,000, excuse me, times 5 times 1 1,000th, which is 4 ten thousandths times 5 1,000th. And another way to write this as decimals is 4 times a 10,000th times 5 times a 1,000th. And you could take it further. I mean, you can multiply 4 times 5 and get 20 times, multiply 10,000 times 1,000 and get 10 million you can put your 20 over the 10 million. You could simplify this and get two one millionths. Or you could go tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. There's two millionths or 20 ten millionths. It's really up to you how far you want to go on this thing. In question five, we're reviewing our decimal addition. Just make sure you're lining up your numbers at the decimal points. 
You can use zeros as placeholders here, but zero plus five is five, one plus nine is 10, carry the one, one plus three is four, plus one is five, then you got your three. Five plus five is 10, carry the one, one plus seven is eight, zero plus one is one, decimal point down, one plus seven is eight, and then you got your two. Now you could keep it like this, or you can simplify it to 28 and 18 hundredths. And then I'd like to write the zero in as a placeholder here, but you have one plus zero is one, zero plus eight is eight, 4 plus 2 is 6, decimal points down, 0 plus 9 is 9. And if we're going to calculate sums, we might as well practice calculating differences as well. And again, important to line up at the decimal points. And it really important with subtraction uh, to put our zeros in as placeholders, especially when we're to the right of the decimal point. It's helpful on the left side too, though. So we're going to do a bunch of unbundling and borrowing here, um, but 10 minus 8 is 2. We eventually get it down to 11 minus 7 is 4, decimal points down, 2 minus 1, 1 minus 0. Same thing on these other questions. 10 minus 6 is 4, 10 minus 7 is 3, 10 minus 3 is 7, 2 minus 0 is 2, 2 minus 0 is uh, 2 again with your decimal point coming down. Just make sure you're taking your time on these borrowings because as you had the 0 here, you can't take 6 away from 0, so you can borrow from this 1 in the hundredth spot gets you no hundreds left, which gets us these ten thousandths. You had a zero here, so you had to borrow from the tens to get ten hundredths. Then we only had zero tenths here, so we had to borrow from the one to get ten tenths. In our last question, question seven, I haven't finished too much ahead of time yet, but a quadrilateral that's not a rectangle that has an area of 18 square units, we can think of a parallelogram. Our formula for our area of a parallelogram is area equals our base times our height. Remember, bases and heights have to meet at a right angle. And so you ask yourself, well, what times what is 18? We got 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, and of course the flip sides of those as well. And so if I just start off with my 3 times my 6, I can draw a line here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now this is going to need to come up. One, two, three units. Because remember, your base and your height have to meet at a right angle. And then if I just kind of start from there, this will give me that parallelogram I'm looking for. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can connect these like so. And so that has an area of 18 square units. And if you remember back to parallelograms, we'd cut off the triangle and make it a rectangle, and you can certainly prove it that way too. Our 2 by 9, you can do something very similar here. If we just draw in two units here, we can then go up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then go two units over from there. So we have a base of 2, our height and our base meet at a right angle, and then we can just draw in here as best as we can. And you could certainly do the 1 by 18 as well, but I only needed to do 2. Um, actually, I only needed to do 1 and did 2. Bonus for us. That's it for this grade 6 practice problems review on Unit 5, Lesson 5, Decimal Points in Products. Good luck.